Welcome to our program of KK Hendrick State Open University. I am Rani Kalita from Department of Education going to present you a topic on aims of education. So before going to the topic of what are the aims of education, we must know the necessity of aims of education. So why the aims are necessary in the part of our education? Firstly, a definite aim of education gives us direction to act in a definite way. If there is an aim, we are aware what we are doing and why we are doing it. Aims are necessary to assess the outcomes or results of the educative activity. Again, clear determination of educational aim can only ensure development of life in the right direction towards reaching the goal. Lastly, it provides continuity and significance to education because without aim, it is very difficult to unfold new dimension of knowledge, develop new capacities in the individual. So here we have presented the different classification of aims of education. We can classify the general aims of education under six broad categories. They are individual aim, social aim, liberal aim, vocational aim, harmonious development aim, and complete living as an aim of education. So firstly, what is individual aim of education? So the name itself presents that this aim of education actually emphasizes the development of every individual in the society. So this aim actually believes that the success of education depends on the development of highest potentialities of the individual. Therefore, maximum opportunities should be made to available to each and every individual for developing their all round possibilities that may be physical, moral, intellectual and spiritual possibilities. So individual aim also believes that social development basically depends upon individual development. That means if an individual develops, that means together the society will also develop. So Sir Percy Nunn he was the chief supporter of this aim. He mentioned that individuality is the ideal of life and added that a scheme of education is ultimately to be valued by its success in fostering the highest degree of individual excellence. The second aim is social aim of education. The name itself signifies that the education must emphasizes upon the society. We must provide education for the development of society. So the basic theme of this aim is the society itself. That means the society is supreme to the individual. This aim believes that the state or society in the supreme and individual exist only for the society. Individuals cannot develop in isolation from the society. Therefore, education must always work for the welfare and progress of the society. According to this aim, the interest of the society is supreme and the position of an individual is always subordinate to the society or state. The basic philosophy of social aim is that society is the ultimate reality and the individual cannot rise above the social entity. So the chief supporter of this aim of education is John Dewey. According to him, every state must design education for social welfare and efficiency. A socially efficient individual will be economically self-sufficient 
and he will not be a parasite on society but will contribute positively towards the progress of the society. The third aim of education is the liberal aim of education. So the term liberal itself maintains that to liberate our mind, to liberate our soul, to liberate our body. So this concept or this aim of education is not a recent one. It is very old. The aim of education in the ancient time was to liberate the mind. That's why the subjects, there, the provisions were made in the ancient time to include the subjects like philosophy, logic, geometry, fine arts, etc. in their curriculum. The supporters of the liberal aim believe that man is considered to be far superior to animals because of his certain cognitive abilities such as thinking, reasoning, problem solving, etc. Therefore, liberal education laid emphasis on the development of this mental qualities of individual. Socrates, who was a Greek philosopher, was a chief supporter of this aim. He mentioned that one who had true knowledge could not be other than virtuous. So, education cannot but have knowledge as its important aim. The fourth and the important aim of education in the present day context is the vocational aim of education. We all know that we all take education only for the means of vocation, to be a money-oriented person, to get some kind of earning, to get the livelihood in our life. So in the present or in the modern context, in the 21st century, the most important aim we can say is the vocational aim of education. So this aim of education has laid stress on practical aspects of education. It has given importance on training in some vocation or craft so that a person can earn his own living in future life. Vocational aim is getting importance in the present times due to the following reasons. And what are the reasons? It makes one economically self-sufficient. Secondly, it strikes a balance between economic and individual progress. It prepares students for a useful life and useful occupation. Thirdly, it is essential to bridge the gap between the upper and the lower classes of the society. And finally, it develops the concept of dignity of labor among the students. The fifth aim of education is the harmonious development aim. So now what is the harmonious development aim? What it means? It means developing the psychophysical and moral qualities of an individual in a balanced and harmonious way. We know that a child inherits the faculties of body, mind and soul. So it is the education which should establish a harmony between these three aspects or the aspects of development for emergence of an ideal personality. That means the establishment of harmony between the body, mind and soul must be made with the help of education to build up an ideal personality in every child. Here, the Mahatma Gandhi also lays emphasis on harmonious development when he says, by education, I mean all round drawing out of the best in child and mind, body, mind and spirit. Thus, this aim of education believes in the development of all innate powers and capabilities of the child in a harmonious way in order to produce a well-balanced personality. The sixth aim of education is complete living as an aim of education. So this aim has been formulated 
and expounded by Herbert Spencer. Education, according to him, should acquaint us with the laws and ways of complete living. Now, what is complete living? The concept of living implies living one's life to the full in its various aspects. We know that an individual's personality has different aspects and every aspect of human personality should find expression through different types of activities and experiences. And for complete living as an aim, he has suggested that means the Herbert Spencer had suggested a number of activities and certain subjects of study for children. According to Herbert Spencer, the subjects like physics, language, mathematics, geography, history, psychology, home science, music, these are the subjects which helps in the training of complete living of life. And this training in the activities help in self-preservation, rearing of offsprings, social preservation and also laser can be imparted through this subjects which we have already mentioned in our slide next as we have already mentioned the six aim of education that are the general aims of education now a specific aim of education in the present day as we are the citizens of india as we are the citizen of a democratic country so this specific aim of education is very necessary and that specific aim of education is nothing but aim of education in a democracy that means how the education system of a democratic country should be provided to each and every citizen of india not only in india all the other democratic countries so how the education system and what are the needs what are the needs should be included in the curriculum for giving the education in a democratic country so in this context secondary education commission has decided some aims of education by analyzing the educational needs of the Indian democracy. So these are as follows. Firstly, the education for democratic citizenship. It means that education should be provided to every individual to build up a character of a good citizen. Firstly, the education in every institution must be provided so that every child can build up their personality as a good citizen of the country. So, it should be the aim of education to train all students to develop qualities which are of great importance to discharge their duties as a democratic citizen. Next is the education for art of living so what is art of living we know that man is a social creature and in a democracy every individual is important therefore individual has to be trained in the art of living a community life that means to maintain a social life and to develop a good feeling, fellow feeling, brotherly feeling, friendliness, this kind of nature should be adopted by every children. And how the children will adopt these qualities? With the help of education provided in a country, in a democratic country of our world. So for this development of virtues like tolerance is necessary for mutual goodwill and this virtue should be developed through education next is development of a sense of true patriotism so true patriotism is another important aim where education has to play a very important role by organizing some workshops on the issues of the state and national topics and also celebrating anniversaries in memory of the great men of the nation. The students ought to be taught that they are not only the citizens of their own country, but they are the citizens of the whole world. Next is the most important, that is, development of vocational efficiency. 
So success of democracy depends upon its efficient citizens. So development of the country is possible only through promoting skill and efficiency. Development of personality is the next point. Here in a democracy, personality of individual is very important, which we already know. So for all round development of individual, some kind of subjects should be included in the curriculum which is provided by the educational institutions. So what are the subjects? The subjects are like art, craft, music and dance. And these are in, should be included in the secondary school curriculum along with national discipline scheme and national cadet crops etc. for physical development. Last but not the least is education for leadership. So leadership through education means leadership in all fields like science, literature, art, culture, etc. A leader must possess the virtues like tolerance, wisdom, understanding, discipline and justice. So training for leadership is necessary for the development of these qualities and a suitable system of education can provide such training. So this in a brief how the education system should be in a democratic country. So in gist I can see that we have got in the aims of education we have got the six general aims of education which we have discussed and the specific aims of education for a democratic country like India has provided this is some important points as provided by the secondary education commission so here in a gist it has been completed and we can see these are all the aims of education thank you